Um, so that was the mission of Reach. But right at the same time, and truthfully, maybe because of my efforts with Reach and my publicity that I was doing on TCPA World talking about these issues, uh, the FCC initiated a, what's called a, a notice of proposed rulemaking uh, to look at closing what they called the lead generator loophole. Because all of these abuses that we were just talking through, um, the FCC began to become much more informed of this. And for many years, understand, you know, the, the government had no idea that the lead generation industry even existed. They had no clue about this industry. It was totally unregulated. It was completely under the radar. Uh, and so people were like pulling their hair out thinking, how do we stop robocalls? And no one realized that like so many of the robocalls were coming because people would fill out one form on a website and their lead would get sold a thousand times over a five year period with no one telling them to stop. And there was no rules around that. And you're right, hungry agents, thirsty agents, man, we're paying pennies for data with a lead that was generated four years ago. The guy's not even in the market, but hey, it is you know. lucrative. I hate to interrupt you, but it's very lucrative to the data vendor. You know, it, th they generate it one time, that's their marketing cost. And then when it's resold again and again, it's 100% margin from there. I it's get free it. Money, it's, man. it's free money. And, and they, you know, from their perspective, and the messed up thing is it was probably legal. Right. I, I mean, it, like no rule was being broken as long as they weren't lying. Right. They're selling you a lead. Oh, this was 100 percent, you know, TCPA compliant opt in. And if you're dumb enough to buy it without asking, well, when was it generated? Um, you know, there's no there's no fraud there. Uh, if it's a real lead, even if it's five years old. Right. You're paying for it. And nothing. they don't know any better. You're right. They don't know any better. Um, so anyway, the commission you know, got a hold of all these abuses and they decided, look, something needed to be done. Uh, and so going back to February of 2023, so a year ago, uh, they put out a, a, a proposal basically saying, we're gonna close, we're gonna end lead generation. We're gonna say that you cannot transfer an online consent form at all. And so all of a sudden Reach, which was designed primarily for self-regulation and for setting standards in the industry, kind of had to go into turbo drive to save the industry all of a sudden, right? Which was not what we were created, but we became like the number one advocacy right. arm of the industry because, you know, throwing out the baby with the bathwater isn't a good idea either, right? Yes, there was abuses, but wait a second, lead generation is critical for small business. It's a superpower of our economy. Exactly. So many people rely on this and it is good for the consumer, right? The consumer gets to be connected with a small company, you know, in their That's geographic right. area that can meet their specific needs. That's not bad. That's not a bad That's thing. Right. And, and let me throw this in too, especially in life insurance, because, you know, look at every study in any life insurance agent would tell you, any financial service person, uh, professional would tell you, the, it's outbound. They're not calling in. We don't have people lining up at the door outside of our agencies to come get life insurance and financial services. We have right. to go get them. So that component, I get it's there. I completely understand it. You know, my, my fight is against, you know, the inundation we're talking about. So Reach, you know, worked with the commission and the commission uh, has a, a group called the Small Business Administration and we worked through them. Uh, and although I think the FCC was really leaning heavily towards shutting down the entire industry, like they just really didn't understand initially right. what the benefit of it was. Uh, by the time Reach got done, uh, you know, the commission, uh, you know, said, look, we understand the value of lead generation. We understand the value of, of comparison shopping, um, but we are going to it, it, it require a one-to-one -one rule. And what that means is that that consumer is gonna have to be given a specific seller, a specific brand that that consumer is willing to hear from. And the consumer has to choose which brand they wanna hear from. Now, the website operator can have multiple brands yep. and the consumer can, list, can, can pick more than one, but they have to be selected one at a time. Uh, and the really tricky part of this whole thing is, is as I just said, it has to be the brand, it has to be the seller right? The, the, the provider of the good or service. And here that word seller is confusing because we're not talking about the lead seller. Yep. We're not even talking about the, the insurance product seller, the agent or the broker. We're talking about the seller being the ultimate provider of the good or service, right? The actual carrier is the seller here. Okay. So as, as worded, right? In order for you know, an agent to be able to sell a carrier's product, going all the way down to the lead generator level, right? That form has to include the word you know, or that the uh, checkbox, right? Next to that carrier. And again, there could be four carriers listed, um, but whichever one the, the consumer hears from, that lead is now valid only for those carriers. And if it gets sold over to an agent, agent buys that, agent has to be aware, agent can only sell those carriers. You can't be a broker, you can't try to sell something else 
has to be only one of those carriers that that consumer has accepted, um, which is a very, very big change. It's very challenging for the broker model, right? Where you can imagine a form where the consumer only wants to hear from one carrier and you're a broker and you're supposed to find that, that cus customer the best, right? The right yeah. policy for them, but they only want to hear about one. And so you can't talk about any of the others, right? How can you do That's your right. job? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a very challenging circumstance that the commission has put us into. And I don't think that they understood what they were doing. So the other piece of good news, and we can unpack it just a little bit more. Right. But the other piece of good news is that, again, through Reach's efforts, um, we, we convinced the FCC that they did not receive enough comment from small businesses. They didn't look enough at the impact on small business before they adopted their rule. Uh, and so the commission reopened the comment period just to hear from small businesses about the impact of the rule uh, until Mar uh, February 26th. So that, that comment window just closed. It closed February 26th. Uh, but a lot of small businesses just did come forward. Reach came forward with an additional comment. Uh, there was a lot of, okay. of really good traction now in the record kind of explaining why this rule is going to be really damaging for small business. And we gave some, I think, very tangible ways that the commission could roll it back to some degree uh, and protect consumers still. You know, one example of what I just said, rather than have the word seller in there, which is very confusing and really only requires the carriers to be listed, if you just replace that word with entity, uh, then you could have the agent's name or the broker's name listed, right? And the consumer could hear from them instead of just having to hear from one or two uh, carriers, That's right. uh, which yeah. is not good for the consumer. Yeah, and that in that example exactly uh, is how we set up for our you know our lead generation software, where the the form itself uh, it gives what I call it the branding umbrella. So if you're part of that branding umbrella, you can be a part of that brand, and then you can be distributing to multiple agents. It doesn't matter because they can't control which agent under your brand that you pass the lead to, right? These agents, uh, and myself included, we're independents. We don't work for one carrier. We don't represent right. one carrier. Yeah. So as long as we leave carrier out of the marketing altogether and we brand our agency tie only, then we still have the ability to reach to multiple carriers. Is that correct? I mean, currently, no. Once the one-to-one -one rule becomes the law, that model you just described, it's, it's dead. It can't work. And that's a problem, right? The commission did not think about that because, you know, take a look at the branding umbrella, right? Let's say the branding umbrella is for, is for you know, red company. Um, and everybody in the branding umbrella is red company, but the carrier is the one that's actually providing the product, right? Red company doesn't provide the product. They're just providing a finding service, trying to connect that consumer with the carrier. Um, so one way that you could do it is you could try to revamp the whole thing and say, no, 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 no. Red company is providing the service. The service is finding the right product for the consumer. Exactly. That is the service, right? Uh, but then that has to be the call to action to the consumer. It can't be, you know, it sign is. up. We call it advisor. Right. Request an advisor is what we call it. Exactly. Call that's action. exactly right. So that's, that's the it. model. Now, even that yeah. is dangerous, right? Because now you have to have the consumer essentially sign up for your advisory service before signing up, or, you know, obtaining any carrier products. So it's like a two-step yep. dance. Uh, and we can still expect the plaintiff's bar is going to challenge that and say, really? yeah, you know, the advisory service is nonsense. Really, it's still just, you know, they're just here for insurance and the insurance That's company the carrier is, is, the, is the good or service provider. Now, again, Reach's comment out there to the commission highlights this exact issue very specifically and says, look, commission, there's no reason why, uh, uh, you know, the, the consumer shouldn't be able to hear from, from Red's and has to only hear from one specific carrier, the entire reason the consumer is coming into the comparison shopping landscape is because they don't know that's which right. carrier is best for them, right? That's and our so job. You, yep. yeah, that's their job, right? And so the FCC, like you are literally stripping away the number one benefit of comparison shopping, stripping away the number one benefit uh, of the advisory service uh, by forcing arbitrarily that consumer to make a decision before they're empowered and educated to make that decision. Uh, and that's a real problem. I don't think that's what the FCC yes. was trying to do, but that is the reason. Right. It's an implication. That's right. You've just watched a segment of our interview with attorney Eric Troutman. We'll put another segment of this interview right over here. We really encourage that you watch this entire interview. We'll put that video right here. See you guys next time.